Hey, it's been a couple days since we did a video, so I wanted to tell you what's going on, what the status of things are, and what we're working on here at Ham Radio Deluxe. Join me in today's edition of the Ham Radio Deluxe video newsletter. I'm Mike, Whiskey Alpha 9, Papa India Echo with Ham Radio Deluxe. If you find this video useful, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Okay, to talk about a couple things. Uh, first of all, you know, again, I always want to start with thanks because um, I want to thank everybody for the patience, for their support, and uh, on everything that's going on. Um, we've heard from a lot of customers. Um, frankly, probably for every eight to nine customers that are really happy, we've got a customer that's not very happy. So um, I'm going to say 85% happy, 10% uh, probably haven't tried it yet, um, and about 5% are pretty unhappy, and they're really vocal about it. So I want to talk about that a little bit as we go through this. But um, again, thanks to everybody, regardless of whether you're happy or you're not happy. But um, I want to start at the top of this, really, which is, um, you know, who are we? Um, Tammy and I were at a ham fest uh, a few months ago and someone was asking about whether or not we should have, um, you know, a, a particular piece of equipment or something. And, uh, and Tammy said, uh, well, I'm not sure we can afford to buy that right now. The answer was just have HRD buy it for you. Well, we are HRD. Um, so, you know, when you, when you start a business or when you incorporate a business, um, you still have expenses to pay and, um, and, uh, all the things that go along with it. But, uh, for me, I'm, um, I'm the only owner. So at this point, it's basically a family operated business. Hamrio Deluxe is not my day job. I'm a technology executive. Uh, most of you, or many of you know this. You know, oddly, I, I get up, I, I go to, you know, leave for work seven o'clock in the morning. I get home at six grab a bite to eat um, after coming home from the day job and, and I do HRD until Tammy calls me and tells me it's time to go to bed. So we're working hard. The developers are working hard. Everybody's putting seven days a week into this. And then Lindy, uh, she does the sales and marketing stuff for us and she's got three kids. Proud of all of them. Uh, the one on the far right is, uh, we call him Buddy, but he's a soccer player. He played soccer earlier today. Dagny, the one in the middle, she's doing dance and she's in competitions. And then Peyton, the one on the far left, is uh, a very competitive softball player. Um, she's 12 years old and she's about five foot nine. <laughs> she's great. And so Lindy homeschools the kids. That's who we are and that's what, what we're running this on. So, um, of course, we have uh, Kevin and Ferry to do tech support. All the all the all the remainder that comes out of running this business goes right back into software development, and has for years. It's it's really just a kind of a, I would say, a passion of mine, and uh, and I want to see it do well because I believe in it, and I think we're we're going to make a good product. We've got a good product, and you're going to love it. Uh, let's talk about what the biggest issues are that we've been dealing with. Let's hit the hot item right off the top. Um, the AVX2 requirements, so that's adva advanced vector extensions, I think it is. But basically, it's um, part of the CPU, the actual microprocessor made by Intel or whomever. Um, and this is an instruction set inside the CPU. And the version of Qt that we're developing the software in requires AVX, or let's put it this way, um, it runs better with AVX. So uh, I had thought that AVX was out there for like 10 or 12 years. But after talking to some customers, I found out that I'm wrong. Celeron didn't include AVX2 until tw about just under five years ago. So there's no way I want to tell anybody that they've got to replace their PC because, you know, even though it's perfectly capable of running Windows 11, 
they've got to replace it because it won't run Ham Radio Deluxe if it doesn't have AVX2. I don't want to do that. So I just had a conversation with uh, the lead developer, and they're going to make an attempt to remove the AVX2 requirement. And then we'll see how that goes. It'll likely be AVX1, which pretty much gets us back to 2013. But uh, that's that's the intention. Uh, the next bucket of items has to do with license manager. And uh, none of this... So, you know, there's a lot of people who will tell me, you should have done a better job of QA. You should have done a better job of beta testing. We have beta testers in this. Uh, more than a dozen beta testers in this. All day, every day, for the last 60 to 90 days. They've put a lot of effort into this. So please don't tell them that they didn't do enough in beta testing because they've all put lots of hours into this and, and dedicated their own time as volunteers to getting getting work done. Uh, we've gone through more aspects of logbook than anyone has ever done in the history of Ham Radio Deluxe. That's a fact. Um, but we didn't see a few things. And one of them has to do with the license manager topic where there's an error where it's asking for the call sign again. There's another one where it's asking for the call sign and it seems to be an uppercase, lowercase problem. And when you get past those, it seems to gobble up um, a seat in the license key. So those are topics that we're looking at. And um, beyond that, uh, there were a few database conversion errors and it doesn't happen to everybody. It's a fairly uncommon case and it's it's not everyone running maria and um so it's it's kind of dependent on a number of factors that i really can't explain to you right now but we're working on that there's a a, a field type for a field called user def 9 that uh, apparently the field type um in previous versions was wrong uh, and it was used for a different purpose than what it was intended for in previous versions so as we fixed that, there were some conversion errors that related related to that field. So we've already fixed some of these things. Uh, I tested, uh, I was able to reproduce uh, the license key topic today, the, the one asked for call sign, I was able to, and the gobbling up of the seat. I was able to reproduce that today. That was the first time we've been able to reproduce that. It just didn't happen to any of us during beta testing, but um, on the topic of, of databases, let me just say this. Many years ago, I advised people uh, because Microsoft was kind of fooling around with um, Microsoft Office and the 32-bit versus 64-bit and the access runtime wouldn't run if it, was ha if it had a 64-bit version of Office installed. And finally, I said, fine, you know, here's, a, here's an option. Just run MariaDB. MariaDB is a fork or a version of MySQL. I personally think it's a lot easier to deal with than MySQL, but it's it's easy. It's it's. But on the other hand, it's no longer necessary. So um, un unless you have a, we've got several club stations that have multiple operating positions, multiple PCs. They need a, a database server where they can all log to a common database. Absolutely. Unless you're in that situation, you should be perfectly com comfortable with the default um, SQLite, which is what we're using now. It's what other logging programs are using. Uh, it's perfectly fine. I'm using it. Um, we've got beta testers with almost 300,000 QSOs that are using it. So um, that's what you should do. And, uh, you know, you could install version 6.9, let it run through without doing any database conversion, and then import your log or uh, restore it from backup, and, and there you go. You're done. No errors. Easy to go. So um, there's a small handful of other items like, uh, you know, this reset button didn't do this or this, you know, there's they're just small items. Um, not, you know, not unexpected. We'll get through the small items and most of them have been fixed. Um, for all of the things that I just mentioned, um, we've already had a build created for the testers to test, but it doesn't include the AVX, uh, the AVX2 change. 
So we're going to give the developer another day or two to uh, make the AVX change, and then we're going to run that as as beta testers for a couple days and see how that goes. I may need um, some new beta testers, or I may need some people that are having some of those problems to come in and uh, and give it a go. I'm willing to work with them personally, as I've done with others, to to take a look at how the conversion goes. So uh, it just depends on time, right? Day job, all that kind of stuff. But um, I'm happy to ride along and, and, and with some people if they're having those problems and take a look at the install. There's a number of uh, third-party software issues that have been reported. Just to be clear, 100% of the beta testers use WSJTX and several of them use Grid Tracker. I don't use Grid Tracker. I just haven't found a need to use it. But I use WSJTX every single day. It logs directly to version 6.9. I have no problems whatsoever. JT Alert, I, I don't know anything about JT Alert other than I have, I have no reason to say that we should not operate with JT Alert. I don't have any problem with that. Um, honestly, I've tried to contact the author of JT Alert, Lori. I've tried to contact him over the last seven years. I've kind of given up. Um, somebody who was here previously with HRD software must have upset him in some way. And uh, if that happened, I'm sorry. Uh, I've apologized to Lori in an email. I, I have nothing to do with it, but I welcome uh, the dialogue with Lori to talk about JT Alert. Um, no, no intention to try to alienate people running JT Alert. That said, that's why we built HRD Alert. So I think it's a fantastic addition to the software. And, and I recommend that if you, for whatever reason, can't get JT Alert to work. Programs like win for icom win for yesu I've heard about some problems there. I don't have that software. Um, if I can get a hold of the developer there, I'm happy to exchange keys for or licenses for both pieces of software. He can have ours, and if we can have theirs, and we'll figure it out. Um, no problem with working with those softwares or anybody else's software for that matter. Um, so that's that's what's going on there. And what so as I said, we're working on um, getting a maintenance release out, and I, I expect this to happen within days. Um, certainly probably within a week of the initial um, deployment and I'm working on concepts around more how-to videos there's a lot of good feedback on the how-to videos it's been great and uh, you know there's a lot of cool new stuff in uh, in 6.9 and, and I want you guys to know about it so um, when I say guys gals both and um, try to get a couple of those out each week uh, the documentation has already been updated in some cases, but not in all cases, so we'll be doing more of that. And beyond all this, um, you know, the, the maintenance releases I mentioned, future releases would include the rewrite for, for rig control, where we're moving the rig control commands into external files so that we can um, introduce new radios without having to build a software release. That'll be great. DM780, we're, we're basically going to use AI to improve the decoding and human translation. The rotor control is, is largely done. There's one defect there that has to do with the, a Yesu Cat um, controlled rotor when it's in south stop configuration, but I use the software now, the rotate, rotator control with my south stop oriented rotor. I've got several of them here that I've tested with and it works perfectly fine. There aren't any other issues there. Um, satellite tracking. Uh, we've already begun working on flip mode and we think we know what needs to happen to get manual tuning fixed. So for all of those things, much of the work has been done. It's not going to take two years to get to the end of this story. And then once those things are done, then we'll be in a position to do version seven and which will be multilingual, multi-platform, and a lot of other cool things there. So we're still we're still on the same roadmap. We haven't changed anything at all. So that's what's going on and that's that's what we're working on. And and like I said, I appreciate your patience. Um, we're dedicated to making sure that 
all of our customers are happy with the product and, and uh, continue to want to use it. So that's my update for now. I'm going to get back into uh, helping the developers and, and uh, responding to customers. So 73 from Mike, WA9PIE.